In this segment, we're going to continue our discussion on floating point representation. And we are looking at the background of the floating point representation. And this background which we are talking about, we are using the base 10 numbers, not the, uh, uh, not the binary numbers, which we will talk about later. So let's look at the second part of here. So we're talking about that if we have a fixed register. So let's suppose we have three places to put our uh, uh, integer part and two places to put our um, uh, to put our um, fractional part. Then we know that the numbers which we can represent are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 all the way up to 999.99. Those are the numbers which I can represent. But what we wanted to see is that uh, by doing this kind of representation, you are able to control your amount of true error or round off error in this case uh, to 0.01. However, the relative true errors uh, becomes are small for small numbers and la uh, sorry large for small numbers and small for large numbers. And what we want to do is we want to see if there's a mechanism by which I can have same amount of relative uh, true errors or relative round off errors if I have small numbers or large numbers. So in that case, what I would like to do is I would like you to, I'd like to introduce you to the scientific notation. In the scientific notation, which is the floating point notation, is that let's suppose if I had a number like 256.78, I would write as 2.5678 times 10 to the power 2. So that's what the floating point is, because you have floated this point all the way to this particular number here uh, after 2. So the way the floating point representation or the scientific notation is written is that you take the decimal point in this case to the to a point which is uh, uh, which has an integer right before the decimal point, but it's a non-zero number. So in this case, it being two, so it's two point five six seven eight times ten to the power two because I move this decimal point two to the left, I'll get ten to the power two. So if I have a number like this, uh, zero point zero zero three six seven eight. Then uh, what I'll have to do is I'll have to take, move the decimal all the way up to after three because I need a non-zero number, a single non-zero number before the decimal point, and this will become three point six seven eight times ten to the power minus three. That's what the number will look like. Um, so uh, that's the way you write the scientific notation, and that's what we're going to try to do by using the same five places which we had for the fixed register. See that how does that help us to do that? But before I go about doing that, I just want you to uh, want to give you the general form of the um, uh, of a scientific notation. We call it. Uh, we use. Uh, we have sine, then we have the mantissa, and then we have ten to the power minus the exponent. So that's how you write down your. Uh, uh, scientific notation. So sine is the sine of the number. Mantissa is whatever is here. That's that's the example of a mantissa, 3.678. And then you have the exponent, which is right here, uh, 10 to the power of the exponent, which is uh, minus 3 in this case. So that's how you write down your scientific notation. Uh, sometimes the exponent is also called the phi cand. It's also called the phi cand. So those are used interchangeably in, in the literature. So how does this help us by, by saying that, hey, I'm going to write down the numbers in the scientific notation. How does it relate to what we're talking about when we're talking about the fixed register case where we have three spaces for the uh, uh, integer part and two spaces for the fractional part? This is how I'll, how I'll treat it. I'll say, hey, let me go and take the five places which I had. Let me take the five places which I have. So I still have five places. I'm not increasing the number of places which I have. So I still have the five places now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these four places for the mantissa. I'm going to use these uh, uh, four places for the mantissa. I'm going to use this fifth place for the exponent. So what does this do? What does it do for me? What it does for me is that now I can represent my numbers as 0 0.000 times 10 to the power 0. That will be the smallest number which I can represent. And the largest number will be 9.999 times 10 to the power, uh, uh, 10 to the power what? Um, uh, 10 to the power 9. Okay. Uh, although you might say, hey, you said that the number before the decimal should be a non-zero number, so in that case it will be 1. So yeah, surely, based on that, uh, I'll be able to represent numbers from only from 1 
to 9.9999 times 10 to the power 9 in this case. But let's go and see that what the advantage of doing this. You're already seeing the advantage is that you'll be able to represent for the same number of places which are being assigned to you, which is 5 in this case. You're able to represent numbers from 0 to 9.99 times 10 to the power 9, which is approximately 10 to the power 10. So you are able to represent numbers from 0 to 10 to the power 10, as opposed in the previous case where you were only able to represent 0 to 10 to the power approximately 10 to the power 3, 999.99. So this was in the fixed register, okay, when we had fixed, and this is in the floating uh, register. So you're already seeing that the advantage of doing this floating point representation is that you are able to represent a larger uh, range of numbers, which is important in engineering and scientific calculations. Now, let's go back and see that what happens to the true errors and the relative true errors uh, through an example. So let's suppose if I had a number like 256.786. And if I was going to look at those five, uh, five register um, numbers, like you have five places to register your number, First four are used for the mantissa, so it will be 2.568, 2.568, 2 times 10 to the power 2. That's how it's going to represent it, because I have four places for the mantissa and one place for the exponent right there. So what is the true error in this case? The true error in this case is the exact number minus the uh, approximate uh, approximation or the representation. And that gives me minus 0 0.014 uh, value as the, as the true error. Now, what is the relative uh, true error? The relative true error will be the true error, which is 0 0.014 divided by the exact value and times 100. And in this case, it turns out to be uh, 0 0.0054. That's what I get as the relative, uh, relative true error. Now, uh, as, as, as we said that, hey, let's suppose we take a large number. Let's suppose I take a large number like this, 2567860000. And this is a large number. In fact, this number could not be even represented when I had the fixed register. Now, if I have a large number like this, this number is going to be represented as 2.568 times 10 to the power 8. That's what's going to happen because I'll put the decimal sign here. So I'll 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to be 10 to the power 8. Now, what is the true error in this case? The true error in this case is the exact value, which is 2567860000 minus the approximate value, which is 2.568 times 10 to the power 8. And the true error, which I'm going to get, is minus 14,000. So since minus 14,000 is the true error, you see that, hey, this is a much larger true error than I got for a previous case where I had a number like 256.786. So the true errors are becoming larger for larger numbers, but uh, if you look at the relative uh, true error in this case, uh, it's, minus, it's minus 1,400, minus 14,000, and divided by 2567860 multiplied by 100, and this value here turns out to be 0.0054%. So what you're finding out is that even for large numbers that the relative true error is of the same order as I had for the, for the smaller numbers here. Uh, the reason why this is coming out to be exactly the same is because of the example which I am choosing. Uh, choosing. It should have been different for a number which is similar to this size or this order, but is different. But it will be of the same order. That's what, uh, what I'm trying to drive at. So, so for example, if you had some other numbers like this, if you had uh, 2, 5, 6, uh, 7, 5, 0, 0, 0, in this case, it would be represented as 2.568 uh, times 10 to the power 8. And in this case, your relative true error would be equal to 0 0.0194%. That's what you're going to get is absolute relative to error. So it is, uh, again, um, um, of the same order as you have been getting previously. If you had a number like this, 1.0005, this number would represent as 1.001 .001 times 10 to the power 0. That's how would that get represented. And in this case, the relative uh, true error, absolute relative true error, will be 0 0.04 nine nine uh, seven five percent 
That's the amount of relative true error you're going to get for, for this particular number here. So what you're finding out is that your, number, your relative true errors are of the same order or, uh, as uh, when, you, when you're using the floating point representation where you are using scientific notation to represent your numbers. So as you can see that this number here is approximately equal to 0.5%.